video is to teach you how to make the simple stitch in Tunisian crochet. And what we're going to do is just create a small swatch like this, practicing how we move the stitches on and off the hook. Because the big difference with this style of crochet is the fact that you will actually crochet and keep the stitches on the hook as we go along. And we're working backwards and forwards on those same stitches, always into the same side. We don't turn as we go along. So we're going to start by casting on 12 stitches. So what you need to do is tie yourself a slip knot, pop that onto your hook and then chain 12 stitches. So in exactly the same way that you would with um, the other style of crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And the thing to point out here is when you are doing Tunisian crochet, because it is such a dense fabric that we're creating, especially when doing a stitch like this, we use a much bigger hook than you would normally use for this weight of yarn. So I'm using a double knit weight of yarn and a six millimeter hook. And with my hook, because I'm keeping the stitches on my hook as I go, although I'm only going to be swatching here, so I'll only be using um, the matchery on the hook. If you were going to do a wider piece, such as a scarf or a blanket, you'd need this loop here. So it's a cord that attaches onto the end so you can transfer your stitches onto that. And I've got a stopper on the end. And when we're doing backwards and forwards Tunisian crochet in rows rather than in the rounds, you would just have one hook on the end and then a stopper. You'd only need a hook on the other end if we were going to be doing something in the round. So we've got 12 stitches on our hook. And what we do to get the neatest edge is we're going to be going back along and working these stitches, but we're not going to be going into the front and center of the chain as we might do when um, crocheting a chain start with the other style of crochet. What we're actually gonna do is turn that over and we're going to go into the back of those stitches just to give ourselves a slightly neater edge. So what you do is you put your hook in like that, yarn over and bring it through and you keep it on your hook. So that's one, and two. Eleven, and then on the very end, you've got twelve. And when you're starting with this kind of start in Tunisian crochet, you will be chaining 12 to make 12 stitches. So a bit different to if we were doing um, a chain start in the other kind of crochet, we'd be probably chaining 13 in order to actually end up with 12 stitches. But because that loop on your hook counted as one, you'll be chaining 12 and ending up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 on your hook. So what we're then going to do is we're actually going to go back the way and we're going to work these stitches, bringing them off again. So what you do is you yarn over and you come through one first like that. Then yarn over and we're going to take them off two at a time. So yarn over and pull it through. So with your hook, you're very much doing, a, it's a pull action that you're using more often than anything else. So yarn over and bring it through two, yarn over and through two yarn over through two, yarn over and through two, yarn over through two, right the way back until you get to one live stitch on the hook. So once you come right the way back until you've got one loop left remaining, we then go back and we're going to be working those 12 stitches. But the important thing is the fact that we want to stay on 12 because we don't want to increase so that we can make a straight square swatch. Now, these vertical posts are actually what we're going to be working into. So I don't know, let me just pop that so you can see there. So we're going to be working into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12 as we go back across. Now this live loop on your hook that I've got here, that's your first one. So we're not going to be working into that one there. You miss that one because that's what that will become um, on your way back. So what you're going to do is first go in to this one here. So you put your hook in, yarn over, 
bring that through and keep that onto your hook. So that's two, three, Eleven, and then you are going to go right into the end. Do you see how you've got that little bit of vertical line yarn sitting there in that line? Go right into that one. That is your twelfth one to give you a neater edge. So then we've gone back over. Now it's time to return them back up again till we get back to one loop. So yarn over and come through one initially, and then take them off in twos. So through. And when you do this backwards pass, when you come back to getting back to one loop, you will find it gets very loopy like this. This is totally normal. What we do when we then go back the way is we'll be filling in those gaps. So let me show you one more time going back. So what you're going to be doing when you do this return pass is you'll always be going into that end there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Remember that you're not going to be ever working that one immediately there. That's what this loop that's on your hook does on the way back. So go turn into that one there, yarn over and keep it on the hook this time. And then the final one, you will always go into that straight bit at the end there and work that one. So carry on doing your swatch and you'll find that your fabric will come together as you'll swatch a little bit of this simple stitch, which is the most basic stitch in Tunisian crochet. All I'm going to show you so that you can keep your swatch is how you would effectively cast off. Um, now there's lots of different ways of doing this and they'll be explored um, in specific projects that you're doing. But if you just want to keep this piece, all I would say to do is when you're doing the um, reverse pass across, just get yourself down to one loop, and then you can just pull that off um, and fasten it as we would do normally. And that way you'll be able to keep your little sample piece. So bring it right the way across. To there, then all you can do is break your yarn, pull that through, and you've got your first little bit of Tunisian crochet fabric.